Hey guys, it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. Sorry about the, for a little bit of mess here. I've recently had some work done in my room. Um, anyways, recently the Avengers Infinity War came out on DVD. Um, part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you know, Avengers, Captain America, Thor, Iron Man, and so on. And, you know, we've had 10 years of the Cinematic Marvel Universe. For today, I wanted to talk about the foundations upon which the MCU was built. In order to have a house, building, whatever, you have to have a solid foundations. Uh, so I want to talk about some of the movies, I say specifically movies, uh, not TV shows or anything like that, um, that helped lay the groundwork for the MCU. Some of these movies were successful, some not so much, but, you know, without some of these movies, you never would have had the MCU to begin with. Uh, in recent... Um, you know, it, sometimes it feels nowadays as if uh, we want to push some of these movies aside or ignore these movies or sometimes even berate these movies and whatnot. But, you know, without some of these movies, we would not have the MCU. So I wanted to talk about some of that history. And in order to do that, we have to start off with 1978 Superman the movie. The first full-length superhero comic book movie adaptation you know not movie serial not linked to tv series like the batman 96 movie was but a standalone feature film that was highly successful and successfully told a superhero's origin you know it goes without saying how well cast you know, the lead star was, and um, all around this was a great superhero movie and is very much the foundation for any comic book franchise movie, be that DC or Marvel or whatever. And following up with that in 1980 is Superman 2. Now, you can argue, you know, what's, what's better, the so-called director's cut or theatrical whatever you know i highly enjoyed the uh theatrical version point is this is one of the most successful movie sequels to any franchise you know because the sequels are very hard to do but this one proved to be as good as the original and again both led into a very solid foundation for franchises of you know various comic book mediums you know, these two movies led into two more Superman movies starring, you know, Christopher Reeve. Um, you can argue about the merit of those two. I highly enjoy any movie that features Christopher movie, uh, Reeve in a Superman movie. You know, if it has him, I'm watching it. You know, period, end of story. Anyways, you know, so these two movies really helped lay, you know, a solid base for comic book movies. Later on in 1989, we get Tim Burton's Batman. And this is when we get um, a lot of imitators, you know, like uh, wanting to do dark, you know, Tim Burton-esque, you know, comic book stuff like the TV series Flash and whatnot. But point is, this was a very successful dark and serious Batman feature film with a lot of great action and it led into a great Batman franchise at least with the first two Batman it's with uh, Tim Burton so you know at the end of the 70s you know we got this movie beginning 80s we had this and then at the end of the 80s we got this and then you know a couple other Batman movies in the 1990s and I'll get to that in just a minute. During this time frame, we're getting various movies, you know, based off of Marvel comic book characters. Not necessarily, you know, we don't have the MCU yet, but we do have movies based off of Marvel characters. And the first of these is Howard the Duck. You know, an off-the-wall movie for an off-the-wall character. Um, 
Also, there was The Punisher with Dolph Lundgren, um, which is actually one of my favorite versions of The Punisher. Um, it's just me. And, um, I'm not a huge fan of the character, but I really enjoyed that movie. There was the 90s uh, Captain America movie. Um, not so great. Um, but the point is, there were these, you know, um, off and on, you know, movies about Marvel characters that weren't as successful as later movies. Then, in 1997, we got Batman and Robin. And that really broke, you know, the comic book movies for a long while. Uh, you know, because of how, you know, off the wall it was. And the only reason any of us watch this now is just to make fun of it. You know, and it really hurt comic book movies. It hurt having full costume characters and, you know, how comic book movies are portrayed and so on, you know. So because of this, for a long while, we did not have characters in full costume. Um, so that's why we get things like it's either have Smallville, where a character is not in tights, you know, running around uh, and flying and whatnot. So, you know, this led into a, you know, sort of backlash against comic book movies for a, quite a while, in fact. Um, then we get the first successful movie about a Marvel comic book character, which is Blade in 1998. However, I would say this is more of a horror movie uh, rather than a comic book movie. Um, and we got, again, uh, a bit of the Tim Burton darkness and the, you know, and various other horror elements with this figure. And, you know, to be fair, Blade himself uh, started off as a Meyer character in Tomb of Dracula. Um, he had a few, you know, solo appearances, a little bit of of his own run in comics you know not a major character but he's you know he's still within the franchise of Marvel characters um and again this um a little bit more of a horror movie but still it's the first successful movie based off a of marvel character in um you know in theaters you know well played by wesley snipes and uh, we got a great villain and various other, you know, elements that led into, you know, um, a small franchise for Blade. Um, you know, two more movies, a later TV series, and whatnot. <clears throat> then, in 2000, we got X-Men. Now, because of all the, you know, sort of hatred for Fox uh, X-Men movies... A lot of people want to forget about this movie. But here's the thing. For one, it was a very good X-Men movie. Probably the best X-Men movie ever made. And I feel a best rep the best representation of the X-Men. You know, and, you know, let's not forget that because of its success, it led into a successful give or take a movie or two <laughs> of uh, Fox movies, you know. The point is that this was successful enough for the Fox to even have an X-Men franchise to begin with. And yes, because of you know, the um, Batman and Robin movie we have not so much you know, um, flashy costumes, but sort of more basic costumes, and for a while the comics uh, imitated the, the costumes made here. You know, more black jackets and leather and stuff like that to be more practical, quote unquote. Although, you know, I I personally don't mind flashy costumes. I mean, um, one of my uh, my favorite eras of comics is golden, silver, and early bronze age. You know, where we have a whole bunch of flashy costumes, you know. That's the thing, because of Adam West Batman and, you know, Joel Schumacher, um, there's sort of reluctance to go full costume and full comic book, you know. 
because it's still the deemed, you know, campy, and we want to be more realistic and blah blah blah. And, you know, this is kind of a little bit like that, but you know, it's it's something based off a of comic book for Pete's sake, people. You know, let's have fun with this thing. Anyways, this was successful enough for Fox to even consider having their own franchise. You know, MCO fans may not want to admit that, but the point is, you know, it was popular enough to gain interest in doing serious Marvel movies about Marvel characters. And that's the important thing. Now, in 2002, we got a sequel to Played. You know, not, you know, it was good. It was better than, uh, say, the latter one. Um, you know, very good. And we have Del Toro directing, and he has his Jules old style. Um, you know, I would say the first one is the best of the lot. But this was a very good sequel and very effective, well done. But, um... Something this has a problem this has and layer one does it's sometimes it undoes things that previously have been done such as the whole Whistler situation and kind of takes away the tension of that. But other than that, it was a very well done sequel and very successful. Still, you know, it's within a horror based franchise, not so much a typical, um, you know, comic book movie, you know. But again, successful enough to have a good, serious uh, Marvel character depicted on film. Also in 2002, we got the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie. And I think this is the best of his Spider-Man movies. And again, here with Sony, we have something was successful enough to have two more sequels and eventually a reboot. Um, I personally enjoyed both of the Amazing Spider-Man movies. You know, yes, uh, Homecoming was good as a movie. Um, I think though it was a shame they couldn't at least reference the origin. You know. And there's nothing wrong with re-exploring origins, you know? And, and that's a whole discussion within itself. But point is, this was a very highly successful movie for Sony. A very good Spider-Man movie. You know, very uh, good with telling the origin story. You know, I think the best thing about it is, you know, Willem Dafoe is the goblin. And they did very good with the goblin costume and the goblin character. I think they do very good with the Spider-Man costume. And, you know, here at least, Spider-Man, Mary Jane, all these characters are done very well, I feel. Now, later, um, in 2003, we got Daredevil. I personally enjoyed this movie. I think uh, Ben Affleck was very good in it. I think um, the actor that uh, Colin Farrell, who played, um, you know, the, the villain, was you know very well done, and you know, you know Bullseye. He um, even though we don't get a costume for him, and you know, in fact, a punchline about that. You know, I think Colin Farrell really excelled as the villain here. Um, we got a very good Kingpin. Um, I have no problem with the race bending here. Uh, but he's a very good physical threat and he does well with the role. Um, again, I highly enjoyed this Daredevil. The only complaint I have with the actress who plays Elektra. And she's a TV actress. She's just not a very good movie actress. Um, some people prefer the director's cut and I can see that argument. Um, you know, again, I personally enjoy this movie. I, I find find it worth watching. Um, I highly enjoyed Ben Affleck in the role. Um, I think uh, they did a very good job with the costume. Um, and, uh, you know, I was appreciative of the full leather costume. Um, so I don't have a problem with the movie per se. I just have a problem with uh, Jennifer Gardner. And we'll get to more uh, of her more later. Point is, um, and that's the thing, that this, in fact, inspired 
a spin-off movie to begin with. And, um, of course, because of that spin-off movie feeling, we didn't get more of that. Um, but anyways, uh, moving on. We got X2, which I think is the second best X-Men movie uh, by Brian Singer. And very well done. Again, as you see here, we have more, you know, sort of realistic costumes, all leather and black, and, you know, sort of dark. But again, a highly successful sequel and laying groundwork for future X-Men movies. You know, again, not all of them were as good, but I feel these first two movies, as stated in a previous video, are the best of a lot. And uh, one of the two best X-Men movies ever made. These two movies and the 90s animated series got me into the X-Men comics. You know, I owe these two movies in the, the 90s series a huge debt for that. Um, so, you know, no matter what Marvel does with them, I'm not going to forget that. Um, and again, you know, because these movies were successful and did Marvel characters well enough to warrant further entries laid groundwork for Marvel to eventually have their own cinematic universe. <clears throat> now, um, also in 2003, we got The Hulk. Um, not really a great movie per se. Um, I think the honestly the best version of The Hulk is the live action TV series uh, and can show that you can actually do a good Hulk without CGI. Um, I think the best thing about this is just Ang Lee's artistic style. I, I mean, I personally enjoyed his, his style of doing things and actually fully realizing comic book panels and how, you know, a live action comic book movie looks like. Um, it's just the problem with the story. It's not a great story per se. Um, and again, this is universal. They still have the rights for solo Hulk movies. You know, not, you know, a great movie per se. But again, I just watched it for the artistic style of being lead direction. You know, that's, you know, the only thing I liked. Um, so this was not as successful of an entry, but a early, you know, Marvel film, not under the MCU banner. <clears throat> And, um, so moving on in, um, let's see, 2004, we got the Punisher movie, which, um, which had Dol John Travolta as the villain, um, not my favorite per se, um, but, um, you know, some people enjoy it, some, you know, some have mixed feeling. And me personally, I really highly enjoyed the version with Dolph Lundgren. That's just my personal ta taste. Um, but the point is, it was another Marvel character put into cinema, you know, uh, early attempt. Um, they had the shirt with his symbol, but, you know, Punisher, you know, he had always had sort of a basic look, not really your typical superhero. Later in 2004, there was Spider-Man 2, um, which was a favorite for some people uh, who highly enjoyed the way Doc Ock was portrayed. Um, some elements of this I like, some not so much. Um, I think I didn't really much care for the more soap, soap opera elements of this. Um, but again, the success of the first film led into sequels and... Sony wanting to keep the rights for a while. Um, but again, you know, we have here a sympathetic villain for some people, and uh, a lot of people highly enjoyed this version of Octopus. <clears throat> Later in 2005, we got the Electric movie. And again, um, I just, I don't care for this actress as Electra. Um, I think Marvel Netflix did a much better job with her. Um, she's just, uh, this actress, uh, she may be more successful on TV. I never watched her Alias uh, TV series. Um, 
But um, Electra really was a flop, and uh, whether you like Daredevil, Daredevil or not, this prevented any future da Daredevil movies or any sort of um, movies within this franchise. And uh, that definitely was an example of not a successful movie on a Marvel character. Then, in um, 2005, we got the first Fox Fantastic Four movie. Um, it was an okay movie, entertaining, um, maybe not great. I think Fantastic Four are hard to do because they're very silver aged. And I don't know if we could ever get a true representation of Fantastic Four because you know, uh, the producers would have to be willing to go full Silver Age with, um, you know, the Fantastic Four. I will say this, that Chris Evans makes a very good Human Torch, and the actor playing Thing does a very good job. I think these two are, you know, the best, uh, you know, casting. Um, I don't much care for the actress playing uh, Sue Storm. Uh, I was not impressed with the actor playing Reed Richards. Uh, those two are definitely the weakest elements. Um, but again, Johnny Storm, uh, true to comics, Thing, true to comics. I think, I personally think they did a great job with uh, the Thing costume. Um, I thought it was very realistic and well done. Um, definitely a lot better than a later uh, version. Um, again, uh, Doctor Doom, not so great, and not so great with the origin here. Um, now this version sort of spun off into the uh, Fantastic Four um, Greatest um, Superhero Team uh, animated series of the 2000s, which I would argue is the best uh, Super uh, Fantastic Four um, franchise, you know, a cartoon ever made. You know, there's a lot of Fantastic Four, you know, cartoons, Hanna-Barbera, you know, and so on. But I think the 2000 version that sort of spun off from this movie is probably the best. And they at least did Doctor Doom the correct way, you know. Also in 2005, we got a reboot of Batman getting far away from Ju Joel Schumacher version and this would lead on into the Nolan trilogy. But again, a very successful, you know, comic book franchise. You know, I would personally argue that um, this movie is more about Bruce Wayne than Batman, but again, a successful enough to warrant interest in a Batman franchise again. Later in 2006, we got the less successful X Men movie, The Last Stand. Um, I only got this uh, very cheap, actually, because I really personally enjoy Hugh Jackman as Logan. And no matter what movie is he's in, um, including very, very bad ones like Wolverine Origins. He acts his socks off with it. Um, and, you know, I, I think he's, he does a very good job with Wolverine. You know, some people for, for no, Wolverine should be short and runky, runty and not so handsome, you know, and so on, and not, or not so emotional. But, you know, I think Hugh Jackman did a great job. Uh, this was not a very great movie. Uh, again, it's just a movie that just to make fun of, you know, damn you Brett Ratter, you know, <laughs> really screwed things up. Um, but then again, Brian Singer moving on to um, Superman Returns, uh, which came out uh, I think a little later, uh, was not a great Superman movie. Uh, probably my personal least favorite Superman movie, and I really love the character. Um, I and I personally do not feel that it was any way a follow up to the Donner versions, um, but that's a whole other discussion. As, um, anyways, so that was definitely a slump in the X Men uh, franchise, but worse was to come for them. 
later on in 2007, we got the Ghost Rider with Nicolas Cage, which was such an awful movie. And <laughs> this is exactly why I'm glad that Nicolas Cage was never cast as Superman because it was not a very good movie. I mean, they gave him far too many quirks and just not very good. Um, and I'm sorry, I did not really much care for the CGI for um, Ghost Rider. Huh? I think there's better live action ways of doing that, but that's a whole other thing. Anyways, in 2007, we got the third Spider-Man movie. And this one definitely hurt the franchise a lot. And definitely a lot of diminishing returns. And the problem here is cramming so many villains into one movie and um, didn't really do well. A lot more of the soap opera elements I didn't personally care for. Um, and this really broke the Spider-Man franchise for quite a while. It was, it'd be quite a while until they uh, Sony would reboot it. And I personally liked the two movies with Andrew Garfield. Um, and let's not forget Toby Maguire's awful dancing and the not so great uh, version of Venom. Let's hope the upcoming Tom Hardy Venom will be a lot better than this. <clears throat> Later in 2007, we got the uh, Fantastic Four um, sequel. And uh, obviously, the first one made enough money to warrant a sequel to begin with. Um, as well as, I guess, a somewhat slight comic book uh, a cartoon uh, spin-off, whatever, what have you. Now again, you know, Evans does great as Johnny Storm, and we uh, I really enjoyed the actor playing the thing, but the, you know, actors for um, Sue and Reed, not so great. You know, um, Silver Surfer was decent. Um, again, Doctor Doom was a disappointment, and of course, it was disappointing that we didn't get to see Galactus. Um, and uh, but honestly, you know, I mean, this is a big giant pur a guy who wears a purple outfit. Huh? But again, again, uh, Thanos was a good a big guy with purple skin. So, you know, it's. It, it would be maybe a little bit difficult to do Thanos or um, uh, Galactus. Uh, um, I've seen one very good um, video game version. Um, but again, Fantastic Four is so Silver Age, it, it would be hard to do in a serious format. Now, of course, after all these, you know, sort of false starts for Mom Marvel characters, but some really good ones. And I want to remember you remember that we get the first entry into the MCU, 2008 Iron Man, and the success of this paved the way for 10 years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Later in 2008, we got the Incredible Hulk movie, which kind of seems to get uh, pushed to the side here, largely because of the replacement for actor. Um, I think Norton did a fairly good job as uh, Bruce. Um, I really like the guy who uh, later becomes the Abomination. Um, I didn't... Uh, the CGI was okay, but it eventually became pretty much a CGI monster slugfest. But again, um, I think the best version was the live-action TV series. Um, you know... Um, but again, so this would be the last pretty much solo Hulk movie. You know, he would be pretty much regulated to team movies. Um, and a large part of it is because of the universal rights issues. Uh, but point is, this was the second Marvel mo movie, uh, highly successful. And of course, in 2009, we got Wolverine Origins which really, really, really hurts the Fox X-Men franchise. Be a while until um, they sort of semi-rebooted with um, X-Men First Class and um, would have, uh, which was a decent movie, and have a 
really excellent to follow up with, um, you know, Days of F Future Past and whatnot. <clears throat> and in 2010, we got Iron Man 2, which again was successful enough and uh, good enough for delay, uh, you know, paved the way for future MCU MCU movies. Um, 2011, we got the Thor movie, which is not my personal favorite. Uh, some people enjoyed it, and also in 2011, we got the very successful Captain America. You know, Chris Evans, again, very well cast here, you know, doing completely different performance from his Johnny Storm. You know, Johnny Storm was more brash and arrogant, uh, and, you know, Captain America is more humble. Then at last, you know, all these movies leading up to Avengers in 2012, and that is when the MCU really took off. Um, this one is not my favorite. Um, I preferred uh, Age of Ultron. Um, but anyways, um, this is what leads into... Um, Iron Man and the movies that lead up to Avengers lead up, uh, pave the way for the MCU comic book universe and you know for 10 years of this universe this version of the universe however you know and we got some good movies some so-so movies out of this franchise you know um, but the point is to remember you know the foundations that the MCU was built with you know the first successful comic book uh, movie its successful sequel you know a successful series dark Batman movie a successful you know movie about a Marvel comic book movie granted it's more of a horror movie but still uh, a successful character movie. Um, and, you know, a successful, you know, first two X-Men movies to pave the way for the Fox franchise and interest in Marvel characters. The also uh, slightly successful um, Sony Spider-Man franchise that... You know, again, without some of these successes, you would not have a solid, firm foundation upon which the MCU house is built. You know, some movies that paved the way for the this these uh, the MCU. These movies are that foundation. You know, as I point out, some of these these other movies not as successful, but a lot of these had you know big box office hits, success you know, and were successful enough to have their own little franchises and to pave the way for the MCU. And the MCU, I feel, owes a debt to some of these movies. You know, some MCU fans would not want to give acknowledgement for that and I think that's really a shame you know so you know be willing to look at some of these early movies and you know what's led into the Marvel Cinematic Universe as we, it is today um, anyways that's all I really wanted to talk about right now um, hope you enjoyed this I'll try to um, upload a video another time take care and I wish you all